Hi, Gaga Join. Here you go again.
Hello, folks. Hello. Hey. Hey, Gregory. All right. Well, um, has anyone got started today? Uh, sorry for getting late here myself. Um, has anyone got the meeting started? No, I do not think so. All right. I think the, <clears throat> the leader wasn't available today. So, um, this call is recorded right now. It's currently uploaded to the CNF working group playlist. It's hosted by uh, CNCF. We'll have to figure out what's going to happen with this call as we move over fully into LFN. There should be, if you have access to the mailing, um, the mailing list or the calendar, you should have uh, access to the meeting notes. You can drop your name and any agenda items, but I think today a couple of things probably want to continue with the, the topics we had in the KubeCon with the community meeting, and we did that a little bit before the U.S. holiday last week. Yeah, actually, I'm interested to, I've been joining this group uh, multiple times, like I learned a lot about uh, uh, what this group does. Can, can maybe discuss how, how this group is going to play in the overall uh, initiative going forward, a new initiative, and the overall, uh, like, CICF, RN, RF uh, networking, and RF Edge. What's the, what does this group, this project place in there, in that picture? But I think that's <clears throat> that's what we try to figure out. How this group fits to the LFN landscape. So, so maybe the, my understanding of what uh, this the 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 work being done in this group is more of a, uh, I, because I I see a lot of a kind of telecom standard and testing. Basically, this is to. Uh, test the, the how CNCF, I mean, how Kubernetes and related technology is used in the in the um, telecom world, right? That's my understanding of what this group does. Is that right? Anything specific? Yeah. So the high level, which is and uh, ties in with the Gerge is. We're trying to transition and merge things from CNCF with the LF, uh, LFN to have one area for the telecom specific things. We know that we're going to have a test catalog continue based on um, the work from the CNF test suite and pulling in um, at least part if not most of the Anikit RC2. So that'll be a test catalog that'll continue. So any testing that can help with um, validation and verification of functional and non-functional tests for telecom. And there is going to be some type of certification and that'll start with um, continuing and supporting the existing certified products that are in from the CNCF 
CNF certification. Those are going to be moved over and we're going to, you know, launch something from there. Beyond that, um, that's what we're trying to figure out. What do we want? Uh, what's going to be valuable to either continue or is there anything missing? Um, we've talked about supporting maybe other projects like NEFIO in the future, but I, I think we right now are more trying to build a list and find out what do people want so that we can see beyond that basis of, of that initial set of tests and the certification that we have now, what do we want from here? Um, and then as far as like, what does the program look like or whatever, we it's we are saying it'll be something like the whole thing is a cloud native telecom program and LFN, but what how that's organized, I think would be part of this as well. Uh, we, we don't want to wait too long to say we have to have it all figured out before we continue. Um, and that's why we're trying to build a list and saying some of it we're going to keep as is, or I won't say keep as is, we'll continue it until we're ready, just like this call. We don't want to just say we're not going to do anything until we uh, know what's there. I, does that help at all, uh, Victor? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not just, I'm just learning. But uh, one thing I find is uh, just observation, because uh, I've been trying to listen to all this community doing, uh, the biggest, um, I want to either problem or kind of need is the integration of the, of the solution that's already uh, uh, established, right? So because the, the, the telecom, uh, before containerization, virtualization has been used mainly in the telecom, uh, for open source community than, than, than containers. So the problem I can see is all those development is done uh, without uh, the standardization of, of being kind of test done by this uh, group, right? So if, um, how does this project is going to help the, make the integration of existing stack like a crano, uh, you know, uh, uh, all those uh, own app, all those different solutions. I know those may not be the ONF. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, not ONF. Just the, the 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 focus of this group. But how to make all those um, stacks, which involve not only container but also virtual machine, how to make those work together? Is that within the scope of this group? I think we can. Um... It probably after we have a list of the different projects and tools, uh, and then maybe you're you're saying also ch the challenges. What do we want, or what would we like if we look at everything? Just add this large list. Then we would be saying what is in scope. Um, so I don't think we're deciding that today, Victor that something is completely in scope or out of scope. Um, the one thing that has been said several times um, before the community meeting that was maybe the larger one, I was hearing some of the stuff before it led up to it at um, Chicago KubeCon. And, and since then is a ridiculous reducing the scope or limiting the scope was desired so one thing that we've heard repeated at this point would be not having not not trying to take over all networking we are uh, not take over not try to say that we can handle and and everything within networking in this group that we are going to be able to cover it all and and take it all in right now. We may expand. So we've said we do want to go from the central core all the way out to the edge. So that means we will have overlap with something like a crano. Um, but you're mentioning VMs and other things. I don't, 
we have said this is going to be cloud native focus. So if if there's something out there that's being used now actively, there's development or whatever that's not in the cloud native space. If someone said it's not really, this isn't really for cloud native, but it is useful. We're not saying stop doing that. It, I would think that would be out of scope though. So we're not trying to do all telecom um, applications. There can be best practices for running in a environment. Um, and I, I don't really want to even say VMs. I think you can use Kubernetes. You can use software that people may think of as cloud native normally. And I don't think you can use that soft just because you're on Kubernetes doesn't mean you're using it in a native fashion, but it may be the best way to use it for your particular use case. And you don't want to follow cloud native best practices. Well, then what we're doing here is probably not for you. And we're not trying to encompass everything. So there is some type of scope. So I don't I don't want to say that we're not going to have a scope, but the the only thing I can think that it's been agreed on is we want to narrow it down to cloud native uh, best practices in telecom. I believe ONAP. I I'm not very uh, completely up to date on it, and so if if someone else here can speak to it, but I believe that ONAP has been moving towards trying to work closer in uh, Kubernetes environments to be uh, closer to being mm -hmm. Kubernetes native, cloud native, but you know I I can't say that it would definitely be part of this or not. I think ONOP on deals more like with the network management layer of of things. And I think uh, this uh, group so far was dealing with whatever, like how cloud native a CNF is. And that is only like, partly touching this network management. Um, domain so according to at least my the picture in my head one up is not not part of this it's a it's another layer on top of on top of this and i think that's one thing what we need to <clears throat> discuss in in these discussions what kind of problem do we try to solve with this initiative in, in LFM, because I think the targets are a bit different from what we tried to do so far in Anuket, where we were uh, focusing on the, whatever, like runtime compatibility of the platform and the CNFs, while the working group uh, is focusing more like best practicing, best practices and design patterns of, of CNF. So these are a little bit different things. However, there is a small overlap, but I think we should, one, one, one thing what we need to figure out um, is what problem we try to solve with these initiatives in, in LFM. And I think from there, we will then see uh, what is the scope and what is the target. Well, maybe I, I can provide my, my point of view in this particular case. Um, the way that I see these things is, um, I mean, in the past, for example, especially in Anuket, um, what what we have seen is, yeah, we prefer the infrastructure to to try to, to cover all the possible scenarios. Um, try to cover like multiple NICs, like um, uh, 
uh, uh, SRIOB, all the, the possible workload scenarios, um, which was a little bit hard for try to to cover everything at all. Like, um, so eventually, at some point, we need like a, we have three examples, like how this the CNF we have uh, require or or need. So and on the other hand, the same thing. Like for for the workloads, we, we need to understand like what is what is the infrastructure capable for. Like uh, maybe we we have uh, some limitations or we don't have any particular limitation. So that's usually the the main dilemma here. Like so, both parties require like um, some knowledge of, of each other. So I guess this particular initiative is trying to clarify or that correlation. Um, it's not trying to provide like a like a the, the implementation the implementation per se. I don't see like a we're we're trying to define like what is the right way to or right technology to use. It's mostly to define like okay, uh, if you follow these best practices in infrastructure or maybe in CNN in, in the workloads. Are, are you going to suffer less? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it's that's my point of view. Maybe maybe I'm I'm wrong about that. But, um, Yeah, I think the main thing is whether the the uh, implementation, the reference implementation in Anika is probably the biggest uh, difference from our current focus. Um, but the scope of where best practices will probably go into a lot of what Anika uh, cared about so if you do care about those things I think that'll still be within scope we've uh, you know I, I think Rani went over this um, during the KubeCon presentation but we're looking at this more as a full stack um, where best practices so if when you're looking at onboarding a CNF, then you're thinking about how does it interact with the the does the application um, have specific requirements with the environment it's going in? Well, then you have to think about those how that environment's set up and challenges that CSP have are not just an application running in a, a workload on and all environments are exactly the same. So the environment um, setup, I think, will be part of it. Uh, by setup, I mean, what are the different components? But that's more of the capabilities of the environment versus the implementation. So I, I, there's some gray area there that might seem closer to what the Anikit, um was doing towards the implementation, but more of it's on the, I think if we think of the testing and stuff, are you capable of testing what's going into this environment? So some of this could get into like NEFIO uh, best practices. So what do we mean there? That could be stuff like the GitOps patterns or KPTs all about declarative configuration. So does your is your application set up for being um, deployable from Git? And what do we what is that? So you need to be able to c communicate um, from the get go from the start that your application is 
has all of its needs uh, communicated up front. So whenever it comes in or there's a change to it, then those can be picked up in a automated for, uh, fashion. So are you ready to for your application to go right into a CICD pipeline? The, this is more thinking about production versus what is the group going to do? We're going to, we're, we're not saying we're going to test all of these things, but we want to help guide people to that. I, I think from vendors creating and developing to consumers that are taking these, there's been a desire to provide more automation and, and stuff across the board. So I think anything that's helping to test and and promote best practices that allow automation is going to be you know at, at least topics of discussion in the group yeah i think at least in my again my mental model uh the reference implementation is um only a, like a locmus test if the requirements defined in array two are implementable. I don't see the reference implementation anything what would be used for actually running CNFs. Um, and I really like the idea from from the reference implementation two project uh contributors that they would like to make the silver stack the reference implementation so, so we would not maintain our own stack in anuket but silver would be the reference implementation for every two i think that for me the main difference between what uh, has been done in, in the working group and what has been done in in anuket is that anuket states requirements for the environment also, and it also uh, tests these requirements of the of the environment. And that's because if we would like to have compliance, we need to be like compliance compliant against something. And that's the way how we ensure that the expectations of the CNF are matching to what uh, the environment provides. While in the working group, it is more like compliance against a set of uh, design patterns and practices. Therefore, there is no like testing of the other end of, of the interface, let's say. Yeah, you're right, Gregory. <clears throat> That's um, what we have seen. The other thing that I was thinking is like, um, at least is something that I have seen this particular trend, where uh, now the the the, the CNF uh, implementations are trying to cover the the infrastructure portion. Like uh, I have seen that at least from from Silva, I guess also from ONAP. And also in FIO, they're trying to uh, not only define the, what the workload uh, is going to do uh, in terms like uh, the, the container definition, the, the source limits, and all these things. It's also they are trying to consider like what, what are the infrastructure requirements. Um, uh, so if, if you remember in FIO, there are three swim lines, uh, and one is from the infrastructure, and the second one is from the workload and the other one is for the, the configuration of the workload. So eventually, I guess, I, I don't know if it's going to be an industry trend, um, but I think it's more like application centric. Uh, so let's say the, infra the infrastructure is going to be defined or dictated by, by the application per se and not vice versa.
Yes, I see also this uh, trend in in Nefio that they are aiming to set the requirements for for the platform in the CRDs and automate the <clears throat> lifecycle management of the platform itself. At least for now, I think the this new program isn't going to decide on who uh, what what the requirements are for a platform. So that Silva is doing that. Nefio is going to have requirements when we look at compliance, which you're saying, Gergay. I don't. There's. It's not in scope as of today. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to be in scope that the group is is running a direct compliance program and, and claiming this is the one platform. At the moment, it's providing upstream tools and tests. So I don't want to just say best practice. It is going to have tests. So a test catalog is a goal. And some of the tests in the test catalog could be used by NFIO. It could be used by Silva or anyone else that does want to provide a compliance program. So Silva has already communicated that they want to have a compliance um. compliance and verification program for the Silva platform. And they are already using tests from Anikid RC2 and from the CNF test suite. So that's fine. Right now, the goal is to increase the number of tests in the test catalog and best practices so that downstream programs like that can use them. So when we say certification, as far as within this program, uh, we've tried to move it away from the meaning of compliance. You're certified that you're following, you can pass these tests or pass, um, you know, that you're following best practices doesn't mean you're compliant to one platform. Ideally, right now, it's going to mean that you're going to work on many platforms that all incorporate those best practices, and the tests are checking those practices. Some of those are not just non-functional best practices, though, so that's something to point out. We could have non non-functional, and if you're looking at something like the CNI spec, which is covered already in the CNF test suite and it's a requirement in the Anikit, um test matrix, at which I think it may be one of the missing re uh, test requirements, but that's that would be a more of a functional. So that, and that's closer to like APIs. Um, a lot of what's in the Anikit test matrix um, I think 99% of the testing are all external, um, pulling in stuff like Kubernetes ADE test um, beyond just the Kubernetes conformance to test specific API coverage. And that is something that could be included. So these would be everybody upstream. So if you're running a a Kubernetes based environment and you're wanting to follow you're wanting to utilize the open standards that the community wants well that means you're probably going to start with the base Kubernetes APIs and the extensions from beyond there 
And I think that's all valid stuff that's already in Anakid RC2 and supported by the current CNF test suite that we can use. Um, some of the ED tests are already there. They're just not part of the CNF certification. But when we're looking at test catalog, so think test catalog and not just certification and conformance. We want the test catalog to be anything in telecom that's going to help you to be more native in your environment, that's going to allow interoperability with anything that's Kubernetes native and cloud native in its utilization is, I think, in scope. So that's why I mentioned NEFIO earlier. I think there's going to be a lot of upstream tests that can be part of the test catalog that would be useful for something like NEFIO. There's also projects like Flux, Flux um, Workflow, or I'm sorry, Argo Workflow, Argo CD. So there's overlap in those projects with what NEFIO is doing, and CSPs are already in production using those. So I think any type of testing that we can do that'll be upstream of those projects. So then we say, here's your application or your environment, and it wants to be able to do automation that's useful for NEFIO or Flux or Argo. If we have tests that can validate those things as well as document them in best practices, it's gonna help anybody, whether you're developing applications or you're consuming them and you want to use those type of projects. Does that differentiate a little bit between say Silva, which is, is focused on a specific implementation and requirements and then us being an upstream group that can be utilized by Silva or NEFIO or even specific cloud providers. This could be, you know, maybe Google or Microsoft Azure for operators. They've actually talked with the CNF working group in the past. I don't know, Gurge, if they've talked with the Anakit team, but they've talked about using the testing and best practices for their environment and when people are onboarding so they could actually run and say, if you pass these tests, then you're likely to work. Uh, it'll give you some assurance that you work in an environment because it's not specific to them. It's more general purpose. Um, Red Hat, um, OpenShift, any of those would be downstream of what this project is. Yeah, we we did we um were working together with with uh, the group from Azure who was moved there from AT and T like Pankaj. For example, I saw that he is also active in the working group group repo, but uh, they are not using. Uh, according to my knowledge, they are not using uh, RC2 as it is, but they are using RA2, the documentation as the um, kind of like whatever, like um, design document for their cloud infrastructure. They are not following it like requirement by requirement, but use it for inspirations. And I think one, one clarification, I think uh, having a conformance program for the platforms doesn't mean that we would like to uh, glorify one platform. It's the exact opposite. We would like to have several platforms uh, which are compliant and that would guarantee that a Ranuket compliant application can start without any problems there. That's the Basically, that's the whole dream state of 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 the Anuket uh, specifications project.
Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And I, I think, um, I, I can't see that Silva is trying to do something different, maybe expanding on that same idea to add more requirements um, for what the platform would look like. Um, at least previously, it's been based on building from Manica, at least in part, taking pieces of it and then adding more requirements. So it's the same sort of idea. Um, well, I, and, I think it, it, what they ahead. are doing is a bit, bit, bit different. So they, they do not have a platform compliance program, but they have an actual implementation of a platform. So Silva provides you a Silva platform, and therefore they do not need to have a compliance program for, for the platform. They have the compliance program for the or verification, as they call it, for the for the CNFs, and they are they are ready to compliant, but they do not take pieces from RI two, so they build their own uh, implementation, which is mostly based on on RQA, and they are using Funk Test um, for the verification center. At least right. that's that's the current <clears throat> current state, and there there is there is um there is now a set of test cases uh contributed by Petar, which are testing the array two requirements to the platform, and this is like these contributions are in a bit of a limbo state because it was it it was contributed to an interrep. Now uh. There is a promise that they will be integrated to to funk test, but I think that's that's the logical next step that that uh, the the platform compliance test <laughs> is is testing more than just the the API um, compliance, and it tests the specific features which are required by by RA two. Uh, other than the test frameworks uh, developed by this group, does is there any other test procedure mechanism uh, in the in the in the Arif networking and Arif edge community? For what purposes? I mean, this this group focuses on testing and best practices related to cloud native <clears throat> network functions. Yes, yeah, similar, uh, but maybe for that project, not like standard best practice, but kind of a testing for that particular project. Um, <clears throat> I think historically we had a few maybe testing frameworks or initiatives under DLFN, but right now, uh, it's expected that the relevant parts of them will become part of this program. Yeah, that, that's actually where I think, uh, just based my limited knowledge about the ecosystem, that seems to be a really good use of this uh, this group's work, is to um, merge those test framework into this one. And then, uh, it, because the actual best practice is probably hard to, uh, enforced right away because there's so many opinionated implementations uh, involving virtual machine as well. But my understanding, the biggest hurdle to for uh, adoption of open source software overall is because of a already you know, there's a lot of already ready to go, ready to run <clears throat> open source projects, but for them to be adopted by you know, the, the, the telcos and any uh, private cloud providers. Uh, is probably good integration is probably the key. So might be so this probably is 
the work by this group is probably the foundation for the test win work, but the actual best practice might need to evolve. Yeah, so there was, there's already work on going to include projects like Nephew from within the LFN and Silva that was mentioned from from the LF and not try to create some parallel testing framework, but work closely with them and provide the testing frameworks and tools that they require. I think integration is one of the biggest hurdles as far as adoption, Victor. You mentioned integration. People are using open source software and Kubernetes and diff lots of different, the technology is being used all over, but having it um I won't even say widely used. I think it's already being widely used in some fashion. And open source is embedded in any product that you get out there. <clears throat> it's some type of influence. But challenge-wise, as far as a challenge that is shared universally is probably the integration of the different software. And that also includes... Uh, ongoing operations and maintenance. So whether it's directly about the software that you're utilizing or ensuring that your environment continues to function and you continue to have services for customers, well, the, the integrations is there. So the interoperability testing, I think, is one of the key things that we want to do with the group. And we want it to be vendor agnostic. We, we may want to ensure that we're encompassing different vendor specific things that we see out there, but that should be done in a vendor agnostic way. So when we look at stuff like APIs and things that uh, Gergay was mentioning that have been covered in the Anikit, uh test matrix and and requirements set it already did pretty well the anikit side in trying to look at what are the different apis that are being used by vendors today and what are different apis in the uh, kubernetes platform and i'm going to just say the environment the kubernetes platform because you can look at extensions and components that go beyond the core Kubernetes that are critical to run a, act, a live production environment. Well, you have APIs and you have the attributes uh, that need to be tested. So I think all of that's going to be in scope. And a lot of it goes right back to what you were saying, Victor, on integration. Integration is a challenge. And interoperability yeah, testing would be part of that. Go ahead, Victor. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, the Because I think 10 years ago, that's when telcos was really spending a lot of money on virtualization. And then comes a container. Uh, now, there's a lot of solution. Yeah, so the, if, it, if there's a if this group can make that easier for telcos to adopt a more standard way, a kind of a, you know, this is the right way to do it thing for um, making cloud native telco infrastructure, uh, I think it will be really useful for, for both existing telco and new uh, providers. Uh, because otherwise all the money already spent, uh, because what I've seen is all the, a lot of money has been spent there's no standard and there's still no good use for this uh, existing software. So yeah, so I think this group could play a key role for that integration standardization part.
I, I think one area where the CNF working group has been successful um, has been following the the model of other groups within, I think, Kubernetes and uh, CNCF as one, but this is a just an open source model. They didn't invent it, but the, when you're talking about standardizations, you can build from a top down approach where you have committees and groups that are deciding on what's needed there and then just uh, build out the standard and then everyone needs to implement to that standard and then you can do it from a bottom bottom up where you have a lot of implementations that are already happening you have apis that exist and you need and they're being utilized in production like you've talked about victor as far as things are out there already you may have new development as well that's fine but people are trying to work together and then you start having APIs that are communicated. Here's what we have, what's been working for us. So there's a lot of communication there. And you end up with a standard that's <clears throat> built based on, you know, open sharing of the information that everybody can implement these similar APIs or um, integrate between open APIs. So a bottom-up open standards are created. And you see this with a lot of what's on the internet today as far as protocols and stuff that everybody utilizes. Um, HTTP would just you know, be one of the largest, biggest ones where anyone can implement. And if you look at the very early days, you did have implementations that were not all compatible, but it kept moving forward until now, you know, any of the browsers are going to have some implementation there. And, and now we've had stuff like, and it's of course old at this point today, but REST and other uh, API um, compatible protocols for HTTP that can uh, do RPC calls for applications. So function calls over that. And we have the same sort of idea from things like gRPC that are expanding that. And I think the success that we've had so far in the CNF working group with products that are certified and um, people adopting the practices and and so forth and using the the test catalog base, has been because of building up for that interoperability and integration. So if we can have the those integration challenges, Victor, if we can expose them and, and make them like clear, here is where we're having a problem with integration, then we're more likely to come up with a solution for the interoperability between those rather than coming from the top down and saying, hey, all of y'all that are having problems, re-implement yourself to a new standard. Bottom up, open, transparent um, community implementation of standards and, and do it based on testing. You can start testing and this would work with what we're seeing in Annika already. When you're looking at the test matrix in RC2, you can go through the whole set of requirements that are there. They're using E to E test from the different um, special interest groups within Kubernetes CNCF communities. There's different sets. Those are all open APIs and testing against um, running te running tests that you can go run against your own platforms. They're there. Uh, 
I, I agree. I think this should be a good place to start. So um, we're at the top of the hour. I th two of the things that I think keep coming up is building out a list of what are tools and resources that we currently have. So, you know, one of them, uh, the f funk test would be one of the uh, tool test frameworks. We have sets of tests already listed in the Anikit RC2 uh, test matrix. We have the test catalog in the CNF test suite, which is beyond the certification. So listing what are the resources and what do we think would be useful is one thing. If if people have those where they think here's something that might be good to keep, um, we want to add to those. That could be put right in these notes. Uh, Randy, if you have a better idea of, of where we could put them, um, if if there's like a wiki page or something on the... Uh, I may have set up a page. Yeah, let me find that. I may have already set okay. up. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> no worries, Randy. Uh, you could drop that in. But so we want to we want to build a list of what are the resources that we have now. Um, and it, it, you could even say, here's a resource that we had, but maybe it's something that's not being maintained. And so we probably don't want to use it. That's fine. We're really building a list. Um, not deciding on this is definitely used. We need to have that list to make it decisions. And then the other part, uh, thanks, Randy. We'll add that into the working group notes as well. The other thing would be those challenges or what type of problems do we would we hope to solve? We may decide that it's not in scope, but I think we need to build a list up first before we make a decision on for sure on what's in scope or not in scope. So Victor, when you're talking about integration or any other type of problem existing applications or systems that are running, whatever it may be, those we can we need to start listing those and and then get them defined enough that we have examples and we can get down to a point where we can say this is something that we want to tackle now later never whatever it may be so those are the two lists so if you have specific integration issues that you're running into or know about that would be something that we'd want to put. And Rani, probably we could have the same thing as the asset list as far as like a challenges, um, challenges and problems that we would like for this group to help um, solve or provide tools for solving. I, I don't want to claim that we're going to solve everyone's challenges but we may be building tests or best practices that someone can use to help solve those problems. So we, whether that's on that same wiki page or another wiki page, we should have a place to start putting that together. Yeah, let me create something real quick. Okay. Okay, just created a page and pasted it in the chat.
Thanks, Trini. All right. So if, if folks can be thinking about um, whether it's resources that we can use or you'd like to use, so there may be something um, that we're not using within Anikit or the CNF Working Group now, but we know it's available. That may be just be a open source project. Um, NFIO has been using free 5GC or here's something that could be tested with. Not everybody must use it, but it allows them to test. Um, CNF Working Group started doing that, so this is more proof of concepts. Um, there's potential lab areas, other things. Please add whatever you're, you know, if you think this could be useful for us, then add it to that asset list. This is in the chat and in the document. And if you have challenges, problems, whatever you may be seeing, please add that to the challenges wiki page. And then I think we could, next time we come together, maybe go through the list of the asset list and challenges, see what's there. Uh, maybe take some time to add any that people have when we get started and then maybe discuss some of this to move it forward. Does that sound good as, as a way to move what we're doing forward, Gergay, Rani, Victor? Okay, for me. All right, yeah, let's, yeah. let's start at with that. Some point, yeah, at some point of time, we have to somehow channel all of these activities to the the talk level. So if we decided to create new projects in LFN or stuff like that, we have to use the processes what we have. Yeah. So as far as organizing it or creating a group or moving it into a group, um, leave that up to, you know, Ranny, you may need to go uh, communicate higher up and figure out what we can do uh, to get some of that started. The one thing that I heard repeated multiple times, it seemed, I won't say consensus, but it seemed like a majority were wanting this was some type of new group, a new program, rather than trying to move into an existing but something specific for this cloud native telecom focus and then taking the pieces that um, we think are relevant for that to be within there. And, and then, you know, we could continue helping existing groups. Nefio, for instance, is going to continue as a specific project. So, but this new thing would probably be a new group. And then the only other thing that I was hearing um, was there was thoughts that it may be, it may not look exactly like anything that's currently existed within LFN. So it may need, uh, that may meet me uh, like a higher up thing, Gerge, where it doesn't exactly follow anything that's been there before. So that may also need to have people at the top of Elephant to decide how, how is that going to happen? Definitely, because for that, <clears throat> they would need to change the charter of Elephant. Because currently Elephant has projects. It's not, not so difficult. Right. Projects and resources and those sort of things. So how does this fit within how they're currently named and, and that sort of thing? All right, I um we 
that may be something to discuss as far as the topic. What would we like to see versus what's possible in LFN today? Um, so, you know, these assets and challenges, fine. These are what we want to solve. How would we like to see this group, you know, continue? What would we like it to see? And if it can fit within something that's currently exists, Gerge, great. Someone says it seems to fit there. If it doesn't fit, then we just need to write write out what we'd like, and then that's pushed up to the top of LFN so that you know they can say, okay, uh, we need to update things to support this type of entity. All right, we're well past the hour. Uh, let's stop here and then um, we can pick up with assets, challenges, and then what we'd like the group to look like on the next meeting. And we do want to continue with uh, building out the test catalog, building out um, certification practices. We already said at the start we want to continue with where we are but if folks have thoughts for expanding on what we currently have um, then please bring that forward i think that could be something to start talking about i know that there's three or four tests that are missing from anikit rc2 matrix and at least two or three of them already exist in the cnf test suite test catalog but we could look at those or Gergay, if you have familiarity with, you know, Silva, Nefio, whatever, where some upstream test would be useful. Let's bring those forward so that we can at least continue in the test catalog and certification help that we can provide to everyone else. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Still. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.